to live like the world. <laughs> Amen. Live like the world. Live like the rest of the church. I'm not putting them down. It's just where they're at. It's where they're at. You know, we have to, there is a growth. There is a spiritual growth in character, in love, in peace, in joy, in righteousness, in holiness. Amen. There is a growth. You start somewhere. You have to give him your unhappiness. Amen. You have to give him your lack of joy, your discouragement. You, those are all acceptable gifts God will receive. And I'm telling you, folks, it's that simple. It's not any more, con, not any more complicated. We complicate it. <laughs> we complicate it, but he doesn't complicate it. <clears throat> it's an acceptable gift. Amen. In accordance, acceptable in accordance to what he has, not with what he does not have. Amen. God will give you what you need. Amen. You give him all that nasty stuff. We call it the flesh. We call it nature. Nature. Amen. Your family nature. We're not saying family's bad. We're saying you can you have things that have been propagated down through your family tree that, is, that are not good. And if you've been alive more than a day <laughs> and you're older than ten. 10, you know this. <laughs> We're not telling you something you don't know. But it's acceptable, amen? So we give him what we have. That's all we bring out by that point. Amen? The scriptures are somewhat out of out of place, but let's uh, do Ephesians four real quick. It says twenty two says that you put off concerning the former life, the former conduct. You put off concerning the former way you used to live. Amen. You put it off. The old man. What are you putting off? The old man which grows corrupt according to the deceitful lust. We're all, we all were there. We are all there to some degree. It says that you put off concerning your former life, the old man which grows corrupt according to deceitful lust. And he says to what? Verse 23, that's eight, uh, Ephesians 4, 22 through 24. 23 says, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind that you may put on the new man which is created according to God in true righteousness and holiness. You see, you give him the old corrupt man. I give him the old corrupt Steve. The old corrupt Haggerty nature. The old, on all that entails. <laughs> and you put that off. You give it to him, and now you put it off. And he says to be renewed in the spirit of your mind. Well, what is the spirit of your mind? The spirit of your mind is that new, recreated, born-again spirit. You're now recreated after Jesus. Amen? After the Father. Hallelujah. In his spirit, which is the essence. His spirit is the essence, the nature, the personality. It's his very being. Amen? That you're renewed in that. Amen? But it says that we have to put off concerning the former life. The old man. And you put on the new man, which is created according to God in true righteousness and holiness. Go to 1 Peter 1.13. Jerry's famous scripture that Virgil stole. Therefore, gird up the loins of your mind. What does that mean, gird up the loins of your mind? It is that which reproduces in your head. The thoughts that reproduce in your head. you got to stick a belt around it. One scripture says, uh, tighten up the belt around your mind. Amen. I think of a big fat gut like mine, and you put a belt, you can hardly breathe. <laughs> That's 1 Peter 1.13. Gird up. Now, who's he talking to? Oh, Jesus, gird up the loins of my mind. Well, yes, he gives you the ability, and he gives you the help. Amen? You must have the Spirit of God. You can't. I have lived. I had lived my life in church. A number of years, and I had even gotten saved and was in church a number of years, and it was a few years later when I got the Holy Ghost. Amen. Somehow, some way I got a Bible study, I don't know from where, and I started searching the scriptures, 
and the lights turned on. Amen. <laughs> and I said, wait a minute, what is this Holy Ghost that they're talking about? What is receiving, what is Jesus saying when he said, wait and receive the power? Amen. Receive, be endued with power. That means be filled, be overshadowed, be flooded <laughs> with power. It's the Holy Ghost. You see, when I found that out, I found the nearest church that had the Holy Ghost, and I was there. Hallelujah. And I was speaking in tongues afterwards. Hallelujah. But that's just an evidence of the Spirit coming in and filling. Now power is available to live the Christian life. I struggled before I received the power. I struggled before, and I struggled somewhat afterwards, but again, it was my ability to tap in, my ability to let the Spirit of God lead me and guide me into all truth, to tap into the strength and the power of God which was in my life, and not fight Him <laughs> when He wanted to change me with that power. But you see, I lived before, and I lived after, and I tell you something, there's nothing like the after. Nothing like receiving power from on high. Receiving the essence, the nature, the Spirit of God. Yes, you're born again after it. Yes, He dwells with you, but I like Him on the inside. Folks, there's a difference between having Him on the outside and having Him on the inside. And I'm on the after receiving the infilling of the inside. And I'm telling you, there's a difference. Amen. Hallelujah. How did I get there? I don't know how I got there. Oh, first Peter, gird up the loins of your mind. What is he saying about that which reproduces? You see, you have a mind. You are responsible for what goes on in that mind. Aren't we? Yep. Oh boy, yes, you are. You are responsible. It's saying, what is he saying? Gird up the loins. Gird up that which reproduces in your mind. You have reproducing. Your mind is reproducing something. It's produ what is it? The thoughts that go through your head. Amen. Therefore, as a, as a means of spiritual preparation, this is a Williams translation of the following verses. It says, therefore, as means of spiritual preparation, tighten up the belt on your mind. Do you want to get prepared? Amen. Do you want to be prepared spiritually? You want to, you're being either prepared one way or the other, folks. <laughs> your willingness to want the preparation of the Spirit of God is what we're talking about. But he says to, to tighten the belt around your mind. You see, what is that old saying? They say that um, if a let's see, what is it about that bird? If he flies, oh, if it flies, if the bird flies through, you know, the, a bird flies through is one thing. A thought flies through your head is one thing, but if it builds a nest, that is your responsibility, <laughs> right? Right. A, a thought is like a bird; it can fly through your head. But if it takes up it takes up residence and builds a nest, that's become your responsibility. And guess what? Then a bird builds a nest only for one thing: to reproduce, to lay eggs and reproduce. And now you got a bunch of little chicks running around in your head that follow after the mama chick or the mama bird, right? Right. So you better be careful what bird you let. Roost in your nest. All squawking at the same time. <laughs> and all squawking at the same time. You see, you're responsible. You can't be responsible for every thought that gets through your head. But you can. You are responsible for every thought that takes up nest and root and roost in your head. You are responsible. That's what he's saying here. Therefore, he says, watch what birds build a nest in your head. <laughs> watch what thoughts build a nest in your head. Why? Because they're going to reproduce. They're going to reproduce. Oh, yeah. That's the law of sowing and reaping. That's the way you're made. That's the way God made you. He made the mind that way. Amen? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So he says, Therefore, as a means of spiritual preparation, tighten up the belt about your mind. Keep perfectly calm. <laughs> I like this Williams translation of this. <laughs> Keep 